Now, let's try to not be complete tourists, act like we're the millionaires that they think we are, and enjoy the show. What's up guys, it is Monterey Car Week day three, and we just arrived at the Bonhams auction. We just dropped Tyler and Ann off at the Quail. They get to do their fancy car show with the new Countach being unveiled, but we get to go to the Bonhams auction, which is pretty great. We just got here and it's already awesome in the parking lot. There's a Turbo S Cabriolet parked next to us and a Ford GT in the grass. We'll, uh, we'll close up the Tesla here and head on in. It's really not gonna get old. I love it. The difference between today's auction and yesterday's auction is we don't have to sneak into this one, but we still didn't have to pay for it. Tyler and Ann gave us wristbands, so. And look, already a drop head phantom. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty sweet show, I have a feeling. We have what I believe is a clone of the Red Pig. Still really, really cool to see in person. And of course, a Honda Fit. Guys, only at the bottom. Singer 911. A Lancia Delta Integrale. Pretty good stuff, and we haven't even entered the auction yet. <laughs> All right. We are now in the auction. An F40. I feel like we saw like three of these yesterday. That's, that's what Car Week does to you. You see an F40 and you're like, yeah, but I mean, I've seen like, seen a bunch of them. Oh, a Talbot. These are such beautiful cars. Usually always have wheel spats and are just teardrop shaped. This might be the oldest Talbot I've ever seen. Look at the gear selector. It's still a manual, but you just ratchet it straight down. Of course, Colin's over here oogling at the 300 SL. And much like the R&M auction yesterday, they do have estimated values here. So I'll be updating you on those as I'm shocked by them. So let's see what the estimate is for this 1952 Ferrari, which I believe is one of the first production years. Let's see here, uh, 1.7 to, uh, to 2.1. It's not bad. Another cool thing is when you buy a car here, it almost always comes with documentation, and that's what this booth is behind me. You can look up the papers for each one of these cars, service history, and any other sort of documentation that it comes with. They have like a library for each lot. It's pretty neat. Yeah, in the background right now, they're selling Tom Hanks's Airstream trailer. The things that they auction, it's like, it's wild. Look at this though, a blower Bentley. These are so, so cool. I will own one of these one day. Look at this, the supercharger. It's just sticking out of the front. It is so, so cool. We have the Ferrari 512M. This was kind of, if you think about it, the best that the Testarossa ever got. Very cool, very rare. It doesn't even have pop-up headlights. It's kind of one of the 512M things. But over here, we have the Maserati section, and you guys know I'm a Maserati man. Beautiful cars, stunning. But look at this one. Uh, first of all, it looks cool, but look, the whole back there is a window. That is neat, and I bet they don't have that replacement glass at Safe Light. Is it, you think it's a fair safe guess? They don't have that replacement glass at Safe Light? I would say probably not. <laughs> Pantera, Pantera. See, this would be this would be the Maserati that I could afford here. Look at this thing, though. Actually, you know what? How much? What's the estimated on this one? Twenty-five to yeah, twenty-five to thirty-five grand. That's just straight up a, a used car. What's it doing here? Oh, look, another Tyler Hoover special. <laughs> Two of them. I wonder if one of them is an automatic. Oh, that one is. That's the transmission that, that gets you. Yuck. A torque converter automatic Ferrari. Gross. An Amphicar. That's pretty cool. There's an Allard. Look at this mullet special back here. Oh, oh. oh. man, tell me you don't fit in in that. <laughs> Check this out, a 1959 Corvette race car. It is fuel injected, and apparently it was delivered straight from the factory, ready to go racing. So it means it's probably a big tank car, and this is estimated to go for 180 to 220,000. That is pretty sweet. Now we're inside the auction. Currently they're selling Tom Hanks's Tesla P85D, which is in a custom green color. Really good color. Oh, it only went for 60 grand. It's actually a really reasonable price. Selling his Airstream, selling his Tesla. What a unique spread. Frame of a car. Complete with dash. Probably a running and driving frame. Never mind, it is not. There's no way to drive it. But this is a very interesting display piece. Wow. Yeah, this must be something for a dealership, like to show you how strong the chassis is or whatever, but that's pretty cool. But look at this, there's a 1928 Mercedes that is supercharged behind me. That has got to be worth a pretty penny. And also just look at it, this thing is gorgeous. Unbelievable. The size, the engine starts here and it goes up below where you can see. And that's the supercharger. That is so freaking cool. 
What's the estimate on this one? Oh, just a just a cool three to four mil, an, an easy three to four mil, I should say. Wow, what a cool car. Oh my gosh, the exhaust, oh, the whole thing. I'm just geeking out about that one. That is sweet. And look, the, uh, the brake drums are colored. That's like painting your calipers before that was cool. That thing is awesome. That might be my favorite car here. Double Continental kit. See, this was back in the day when it was a, the, a likelihood that you would have two flats. <laughs> wow. That is cool. Oh, it must have a rumble seat because it's got a step back there. Roll-up windows, that would have been very fancy at the time. Okay, it's a 1930 Bacali. It's called a Bacali, or how a child would say broccoli wrong. That is a real GT40, and its estimate is also three to four million dollars. An actual Cobra, 1.1 to 1.2 million dollars on that bad boy. But this is my favorite Zagato design, the DBAR1 Zagato. No top, just looks fantastic pure style probably not the fastest thing in the world but boy is it good looking over here this is a v16 cadillac yes 16 cylinders back then this would have been probably one of the most expensive american cars you could have gotten at the time other than a duesenberg but this one's also a cabriolet which is awesome what what a vehicle Oh my gosh, and the, the engine alone. I wish the hood was open so you could see what a massive V16 from 1935 looked like. It is colossal. And uh, apparently it's worth $500 to $700,000 in today's money. Here on the outskirts of the show, I found a 59 Cadillac convertible and this was the king of the big fins. Look at those things. They just get bigger and bigger. I mean, this is my hand and it is about 80 feet long. Everything about it is awesome. Oh, only 130 to 180. Well, honestly, I was under the impression these were a little bit more expensive. Not that that's cheap, but that's a pretty sweet car for the money. All right, so we left the Bonhams auction. We kind of saw all there was to see. Now we are walking to go get lunch on Ocean Avenue. Yes, just like the yellow card song. The cool part about this area is the car spotting is insane. Like this is kind of the, I guess, Rodeo Drive of Monterey Car Week. It's nuts. Everybody's kind of just cruising up and down this little strip and there's cars street parked that you would never believe or never see street parked in your life. Get ready for some awesome car spotting on our way to lunch. But right, just chilling here. SLS AMG Roadster with a red top. That has to be fairly rare spec. And then an old California fuel run stickers. A plum crazy purple Hellcat, whoa. Oh, and an E60 M5 with its rod bearings intact. Yeah, I mean, well maybe, <laughs> that's a good point. You got a crazy wrapped Vantage right here. Boxer Spider in not white. Another crazy wrapped Vantage. Kind of a tame spec 360, but then a 575 and a GT3 just chilling at that stoplight. And then we have a cool, we have a cool, you know, 15 million-ish dollar California. And this is just chilling here. MP4 12C Spider. Across the way though, look at this. 812 Aperta, old E55 AMG. It's a 570S with a wrap, but still it's awesome. I love that spoiler. And look, a GTC4 Luso. So we don't even know where we're going. We're just like, we're like cars. And then <laughs> we have no idea where we're going. Okay, look, we have arrived. Look what's here, a 2CV. And across the street from that, a 996 GT3. Just a 996 GT3 street parked. It's so awesome. Ah, oh, these are so cool. And actually I had to walk just a little past the restaurant because look, a new Bronco. This is the closest I've been to one and this one's specced very nicely. That is awesome. I have a feeling like every YouTuber is gonna have one of those soon, but it's really cool to see them while they're still brand, brand new. Okay, E39 M5. Okay, so we actually had to abruptly leave lunch because I got what's probably the best call I could possibly receive from Tyler Hoover. He said that just maybe he might uh, let his quail passes slip from his fingers so that Colin and I can go to the quail. If you're not familiar with the quail, that's a car show that costs $1,200 per person to go into. Needless to say, it's not a show we were planning on attending, Clearly. but if the passes make themselves available, well, now we will find ourselves attending. And while we're there, we should be able to see the brand new Countach that just got unveiled today. So 
Wow, this is an opportunity. We had to bail on lunch. Plus, they've got food there. So let's go to it. Still walking down the street here, and then I saw this plate, Tomato, on a, a great car, a GLE 63S. My problem with the plate is this car is not red. Nothing is tomato-y about it. It doesn't even have red calipers. If you're gonna have a cool plate, I like to have it, you know, kind of match the car. But then again, we are in Monterey Car Week, so there's a chance that that guy has made his fortune and a as a tomato farmer. So I actually didn't consider that. Maybe it is a good plate. Our plate is about to say, being at events we're not allowed to be at. <laughs> So here's your typical Monterey stoplight, V8 Vantage convertible, GT3, and a 550. And then behind us, there's a GT3 at the gas station getting gas. I mean, it's everywhere. Everywhere you go is something sick. Ah, uh, I love this. Uh, okay, so downside of the Tesla thing is we are in a big hurry to get to the Quail, but the Tesla here is on 7% battery which is not enough to get us there. So we're gonna try to put the world's fastest charge into this thing and then get to the quail. But boy, this sucks, because we're like, huh, gotta get to the quail before it ends. And well, you have to put electricity in the car, which is not as fast as gas. Come on, come on electricity, go, go. I feel like I've gotta do the PP dance, making this thing charge. Like, let's hustle it up, buddy. This is such an inconvenient time to need to charge. All right, well, we've been waiting here for a few minutes. We're at 32%, which is more than enough to get us there. So let me unplug this thing. All right, everything's sufficiently hot. Let's get to the quail. Okay. Uh, I guess we're, <laughs> we're, we're doing it. We have uh, bands. They allowed us into the parking lot. Eh, some people are leaving, but who cares? We're at the freaking quail. Now, let's try to not be complete tourists, act like we're the millionaires that they think we are and enjoy the show. Okay, we are in in a gold strand C4. Now this is a special, special car and you can see why. It's a supercharged L98 built by racing legend, Dick Goldstrand. I've never seen one in person. That is, that is what the quail is for. Gone over to the Bugatti booth and there's Adam Carolla doing a show right there. If you can see that. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Okay, officially overwhelmed. There's the Gunther Works area. Look, a Hennessy booth, the new F5. And they have two of them. Look at this thing. Dang. Yoke. Unreal. All of the gold shielding. I mean, naturally we need to go to the Rolls Royce area next. Of course. That's what you do. Well, we're in the market for them yeah, yeah, because of yeah. the disposable income that we have that allowed us to be here. So the Rolls-Royce booth, you got your pink ghost and your baby blue Cullinan. Very neat. But if you guys are car enthusiasts, you're going to love this booth, the Rimac booth. So I actually just set the uh, production quarter mile record like this week on drag times. That is something to see in person. That is crazy. You get absolutely demonetized for the music that's playing here, but look, it's the Lotus Evija. The highlight on this one is really the back of it. It's really freaking cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Ooh, they also have the new Lotus that just got announced right here, and the one that they unveiled with that Ant Anstead help design. So that is sweet to see in person. So, and then in between all these manufacturer's booths, there are the finest examples of every car that is significant, just all around, just scattered about the lawn. This is an incredible show. I'm crapping myself. What we're gonna do is go see the new Countach right now. Let's go check it out. Through the crowd, through these old Countaches, there it is. Oh my goodness. Let's take a look around this thing. Unreal. Here it is. This looks phenomenal in person. Oh my goodness. And my favorite part is the headlights actually, because they do such a good job of replicating the little non-pop-up reflector lights on the Countach's. That is amazing. Which I didn't know 
had a little like skylight right there, or skylight, sunroof, whatever. I'm nervous. And over here at this booth, these guys are selling crazy awesome drones. Like, look, this one folds and is a car. And this one is just gigantic. All right, there's the Glickenhaus supercar, the Glickenhaus off-road thing. This, I can assume, is a real P4 Ferrari. It's a 206 Sport prototype, but it is real. And an F40 with the, uh, the hood up. Don't think I've ever seen this, that's for sure. Oh, actually, some storage. And I feel like I've played with this on Forza many a time. That is really awesome to see in person. Oh my god, a 288 GTO running. Holy crap. And an F40 just started up. Yep, this is a good day. A green single mirror Testarossa. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. Look, a Mondial full of people. All right, we just got a quick bite to eat. Lamb burgers, of course, not hamburgers, lamb burgers. Got an F12 TDF, regular F12. And then what I believe is one of the first full production years of Ferrari, a 1949 Ferrari 166 M. M. Ah, and as a 430 man, that's kind of the Z06 of 430s, the 16M Scuderia. It's basically just the Scuderia convertible. But they threw an extra couple of numbers and letters on there, and you know I love that. So is the rest of the car world. So that's why they did it. The, uh, the new McLaren Artura. Almost walked right by it. That's crazy. Looks great in person. It looks like a baby 720. That's awesome. I mean, so far, this has been a very worthwhile show, considering we paid zero dollars to get in here. It's uh, very, very full. A P1 GTR, which is just outrageous in person. It does blend in with the grass a bit, but what doesn't blend in with the grass are those two loud cannons right there. This thing is sweet. Got a GT40 and a Bugatti. This is a valuable boy right here. Oh my goodness. What a gorgeous car. And look at the exhaust. This was in the movie Need for Speed. I know it's famous for something else, but it was definitely in the movie Need for Speed, which is what I know it from. Oh. What a beautiful ride. Hard to tell, but it's, it's green exposed painted carbon fiber. Let's see if we can get it on. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's not so bad. They have the new Elva, but with the windshield, which I think is probably not the way I would order it. The windshield makes it look kind of doofy, in my opinion. It's like way too vertical. It looks like the flat bill hat or like a trucker hat where you're like, mm -hmm. but it is freaking sweet. And these things are nuts. There's a recognizable YouTuber right there. Look at that. Who's that, everybody? <laughs> And then you got the SSC Tuatora, famous this year for not being truthful about their top speed record, but it's still really, really cool to see in person. Here's a C8 Corvette that somehow got allowed in here, a Gullwing, and a 959 with, uh, with factory fogs. That's pretty interesting. We have this, I think, one off, the Speed Legend. This thing's nuts. It's got like the F1, uh, halo hoop thing, it's so sweet. And then, oh, another 959, and then a Z8. And at this point, I think we've almost seen most of the show, which is no small task. And I'm not overwhelmed by the automotive significance at all. Totally casual about all of this. Everybody's already done something with it, but the Gamera in person, very, very beautiful. Oh, look, a Jesco. Look at that. Well, we've left the quail. We're back at Ocean Avenue. Uh, Tyler's right here trying to find a parking spot. It's an absolute madhouse right now. Stradman just drove by in his 6x6 Jeep. That was pretty sick. Um, 
but yeah, now we're just going to be continuing to car spot, and uh, I don't really know what else. But yeah, traffic is nuts right now. That's for sure. Okay, we are on what I can only guess is the main drag here now because the cars are getting crazier. Tyler found a spot, Tyler's already found fans. But across the way, there's some pretty good stuff. Got a Brabus G-Wagon here. Very cool, hard to tell that it's crazy because of the black, but it is, it's very crazy. E39 M5. 348, this is the first 348 I've seen all weekend. Very muted color. Inconspicuous. We have an SV Roadster, a crazy R8, oh, and the DDE Huracan Aperta, and the DDE 720. That must mean they're nearby as well. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> now we got a C5 Corvette over here, but apparently the DDE boys are over here too, because there's Dave. So uh, Damon must be close. Oh, right there. That's where he is and the P1 GTR that we saw at the Quail. All right, well, it was a bit of a madhouse over there with the DDE guys, but I did get to meet Damon and Dave, which was pretty cool. And funny behind the scenes fact, I made Tyler take the picture of me. Uh, it was pretty funny. Usually people wanted all three of them to be in the picture, and I was like, no, no, why don't you take the picture? Anyway, we are back at the Countach now. Things are kind of heating up here, so if something else happens, I'll video it. But if not, I think I'm gonna wrap the video up here because I've got a full day of stuff to do tomorrow as well. So be sure to follow me on Instagram. There's lots of cool pictures from this whole Monterey Car Week thing on there. Like me on Facebook, join my Facebook group. It's a fun place to share memes and I'm almost always in there interacting in the comments. And other than that, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe on this video. It greatly helps my YouTube performance. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.